Uh, my name is Andrzej Chvala, I'm a postdoc at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, and this August I will start there as a research assistant professor. What I'd like to do here is to address a pressing need, a bottleneck of sorts, for molten salt reactor technology, which is the lack of accredited expertise, and how could our department hopefully help with this issue in my presentation. While I applaud and contribute to efforts of uh, Gordon and uh, Rick and others who are you know, trying to educate the public, we need accredited experts, by which I mean uh, people who have advanced degree in nuclear engineering and who have research experience in the field of molten salt reactors. And as we all know, there is very, very few of these people in the United States, and I'm not aware of any uh, nuclear engineering program in the United States which has molten salt reactor technology as a part of their curriculum. Actually, in the West, I'm aware of only, well, only one program with, with such a um, curriculum, which is in the Czech Technical University in their uh, reactor physics uh, uh, department, where, they, where everybody who goes through this, uh, um, their curriculum has a molten salt reactor course in it. Such experts are not only needed for, um, for research and development of these uh, machines and as operators of molten salt reactors. We need cooperation of government at every step um, of the development and deployment. And so the politicians need uh, credible people to ask. Somebody who would hopefully provide a more nuanced uh, answer than molten salt reactors have corrosion problem. You know? um, and we also need knowledgeable experts at uh, the regulatory agency uh, to get molten salt reactors licensed. And we need the MSR capability in, in codes which are used for licensing and validation, such as the scale package, so that we can get these things licensed. And uh, now scale, for instance, doesn't know anything about moving fuel. So these, all these capabilities have to be added to the software, which is validated and used by uh, all the people in the industry, so we can move forward. And uh, as I would say, we lack in all these areas. Uh, list, not an extensive list, but just to give you some ideas about issues which we need to, to, to tackle in, in, in the program. Um, from core neutron x with moving fuel to high temperature instrumentation, pop involves compatible with the salt. Uh, there was some work done back in Oak Ridge, but all this needs to be um, done, in, you know, be done recently and developed. A lot of issues with salt chemistry. I mean, it could, I could make a long presentation just listing the issues which we have to deal with if we are going to molten salt reactors as opposed to the light water reactors. One thing which kind of stands out is that oh, I think we all believe that in an accident scenario, the radiation source which can reach public is much less than uh, the possibilities with light water reactors. We have all the good reasons to believe that, but <laughs> We need to, to prove it and to quantify it. And to my knowledge, this has not been done. And there are many issues like this, that we talk about advantages of molten salt reactors, but we need to prove them and quantify them in a much serious uh, level than we have so far. So how can University of Tennessee help? So uh, our department, faculty, which is very interested in molten salt reactors, we have some very motivated students, and we have an extremely motivated student, uh, you may have heard of him, Kirk Sorensen. We are closely coupled to Oak Ridge, where most of the uh, remaining expertise in molten salt reactor uh, resides. I think we are well placed uh, to uh, help. We could develop high profile academic program to address the education needs of uh, undergraduate and graduate institutions, which then can be shared across the country and across the English-speaking uh, universe, basically, which includes many, even many European institutions of higher education um, other than United Kingdom have courses in nuclear engineering departments which are taught in English. So once we develop a curriculum, then this could be shared uh, across the Western Hemisphere, basically. And this could be complemented by short courses uh, which would be aimed either at uh, the decision makers to kind of educate them in you know, a few hour course perhaps, or uh, professionals who already have advanced degrees in nuclear engineering but didn't, didn't have exposure to molten salt reactors in their education, 
it could be a week long course, for instance, for these people where we would sort of bring them up to speed and show them the issues which are there. And then you can think about journalists and other people. Now, our, uh, our graduate students regularly work on the on code development on scale, for instance, they add new features and they improve existing features. We have uh, several students right now who are working on the scale package and, and other uh, software which is being used. If we get our students to say add the moving fuel uh, feature, it's much more cost efficient than asking Oak Ridge to do it. Because our students work for I think like $2,000 a month we pay them and if you add the fees, the um, overhead, tuition, health insurance, and so on. You are somewhere between fifty and sixty thousand dollars a year to get a student full time working for you. If you ask somebody who's Oak Ridge employee to work for you, it's four hundred thousand dollars per year. So it's nearly an order of magnitude difference if you get our student compared to Oak Ridge employees. And I would say that our students are very smart and many of them become Oak Ridge employees. So uh, you see the cost competitiveness right there. We are, not just, we are not just talking about it. We had a, uh, recent efforts at, at, at our department uh, relevant to molten salt reactors. We had a senior design project. I think that was a Kirk's work. We have a master's project. And we have a PhD dissertation in progress, which are all uh, molten salt reactor related. In 2009, uh, there was a proposal uh, for uh, waste transmutation, uh, light water reactor waste transmutation, molten salt reactors without reprocessing and long term storage submitted to ARPA E. This got rejected, unfortunately. I tried to track down why, and basically the only answer I, I, I was able to, to get was that ARPA E was interested in things which are extremely short term, and anything nuclear is not short term, so um, got rejected. This year, uh, there was a NUP proposal for actinite elimination in fast spectrum molten salt reactors, which had a strong education and curriculum development component in it. I really liked that proposal and I contributed to it, but it got rejected. And as we all know, the uh, US Department of Energy is not currently funding any molten salt related work, molten salt reactor related work uh, with a fluid fuel, which brings up the question if we have a little bit of a chicken or egg problem, that if we don't have people who actually can advise, uh, provide advice to people in power why the molten salt reactors are uh, such a good thing. People who actually are credible, as in they have the proper background and all the degrees and research experience and you know, everything you need in a credible expert, then the government cannot make the optimal decision, which is to fund this work. So we are kind of in a loop. So how to get out of the loop? And uh, I think the, the option would be to find other funding sources. Since uh, our department is well staffed, positioned, and greatly interested in developing these courses, um, we could get funding from anybody who would be interested to fund such an effort, uh, be it a foundation or alliance or company who would be interested in getting people, you know, train people to, who could staff the company in future. Also, many of these short courses could be commercial in nature. Uh, so for academic programs, I think there's really no, uh, no monetary payback other than you actually get qualified people who you can hire. But for these short courses aimed at uh, policymakers, uh, professionals, journalists, public, um, they could be commercials and that, that could provide an avenue to uh, recover some of the investment. And I would be excited to discuss, you know, the levels of funding would be consistent with the level of effort. And I would just say, like to say that our team is uh, flexible, efficient and cost effective. So thank you very much for your attention. And Thanks, Andre. Andre, actually, uh, I, I feel like uh, you know, it's one of the one of the things that I wish the uh, Thorium Energy Alliance has, has had done better in the last few years. But I'm certainly committed to trying to do better with like you and Magdi to try and get that. Because it's, it's exactly as you say, if we have an industry and no one to work in it, then no industry, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, any uh, questions for uh, for Andres? Yeah.
Would it be possible to make an uh, experimental molten salt reactor in the academic setting? So the question was, would it be possible to make an experimental molten salt reactor in the academic setting? Well, I, I believe it would be possible. And you know, there are ideas to, to build a molten salt cooled reactor. Oh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. So there are ideas to, and proposals to build a molten salt cooled reactor, which would be kind of the baby step towards the molten salt reactor you know, by the Per Peterson groups at Oak Ridge. Uh, at, sorry, at Berkeley, but I think the idea was to build the reactor at Oak Ridge. Uh, so it is possible, but again, we need educated people to design these reactors. And I think, realistically, uh, we will start with the molten salt cooled reactors with FHRs, and then we will move to, to MSRs as far as the, the, the DOE program is, is conceived if we move to MSRs. Keep things going. Thank you again, Andres.